Last night my, 35, fiancé, 38, left in the evening to give a friend's son a ride back to his home. She implied she'd be home before 9. She left at around 7.45. 10.15 rolled around and she still wasn't home. I texted and she apologized to me, saying that her friend's son was actually in the next town over, maybe 30 minutes away, and she was coming home now. 11.45 rolled around and she still hadn't come home, so I called her to no answer. Texted her to no response. I was getting very upset. 12.30 rolled around and still no response and no answer to my phone calls. I was extremely angry. 1.30 rolled around and my anger had completely transformed into worry. Not answering my calls and texts not read. Around 1.45 I called the police. I have always heard that the first 24 hours of someone being missing is the most important, so I didn't want to delay. I asked them to let me know if there had been any traffic accidents involving her car, and the operator told me that they would put out the word and send some cops to check along the route she would travel. I called all the hospitals in the area to check if she has been checked in and I waited outside watching the road for her car for three hours, partially because I didn't want the kids to hear me on the phone with hospitals, and secondly because I was sick with worry. At 7 a.m. she came home. She apologized for being out and said she had no excuse. She was driving home and felt tired like she was falling asleep at the wheel, so she pulled over to the side of the road to sleep. When she did that, she found that her brand new phone had stopped working. She says she napped anyway because it was the responsible thing to do, and then came home at 7 a.m. to bring the kids to school and get to work on time. I immediately called the police and told them that she had come home safely and gave them the case number and told them to stop searching, which they did. My fiancé brought the kids to school and left for work. I set out to start cleaning, cleaning distresses me sometimes, and I got a call from a policeman asking where she worked. I told him, and asked why, and I was informed that it was their policy to check on the person's wellness after a missing person is found. I asked them to not go by her work but to give her a call instead. He said he couldn't promise. My fiancé is relatively new to her job. A police officer showed up and asked to speak with her. She is now enraged at me for calling the police and sending a cop to her work and making her look bad. She is saying I overreacted and that she wasn't missing and that I was punishing her for doing the responsible thing and not driving while drowsy. She is saying that she is never going to leave the house again except for work, because she is afraid I'm going to call the cops on her again. So did I overreact? Should I have waited two days like she suggests? Not the idiot, I don't believe her story one bit. Driving a kid home and disappearing for the entire night is a massive red flag. How does she not even know where he lives when she started the drive? How old is this kid? Pulling over and sleeping on the side of a road for a 30 minute drive is nuts. She is now turning this around to say she is the victim of your actions. Not the idiot. She said she was on her way home at 10.15 p.m. and then disappeared until 7 a.m. Of course you were going to call the police and have them go looking for her. If she'd been in an accident or worse, she would have been dead if you'd waited two days to call. That being said, she's definitely lying about what happened. It honestly sounds more like she fell asleep at her affair partner's place and concocted that bogus excuse to cover her butt. Not the idiot. Something is up. That excuse doesn't fly. It just doesn't make sense that she'd sleep all night in her car to avoid a 30-minute drive home. I don't blame you for calling the cops, and her reaction is out of line. I think she's hiding something. If her friend's son was 30 minutes away then she should have been back by 9. I'm 95% sure she's lying to you about where she was. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news here. My so's oldest friend is a bully. We'll call him Matt. Three years ago. Matt was over at our house having some beers with So. I had been out all day with our oldest child and got home in the evening. I cheerfully said hello and had a drink with them while I put our shopping away and got our kids sorted for bed while occasionally chit-chatting with the guys. I asked So to turn down the music as the kids were going to sleep. Matt started chirping me to So, saying oh fun's over I guess and the like. He made several other rude comments including asking me if I was going through the change when I mentioned that it was warm in the house. I bit my tongue because he's just a loser. The final straw was when I was laying down with my daughter, and I overheard Matt say to so I guess I can see now why you're not allowed to come out and hang with us anymore, dude. Again, radio silence from so, I was livid. I came downstairs and said that's more than enough, 
The first five comments weren't funny either. I went back upstairs till he left. Once he was gone, I came downstairs and let loose on so, telling him what an idiot his friend was and how dare he speak to me like that in my own house. Tons of swear words and I wasn't quiet about it. Matt was on the porch waiting for so to bring him something and heard everything. He sputtered out a lame apology and then left in a hurry. To make matters worse, about a week later the group got together, where Matt called so out in front of everybody because of how I treated him, painted a picture of me being a crazy wife and told my husband that he only apologized because they're boys. So, in his infinite wisdom, came home and told me this. Worth mentioning, this is very out of character for so, he's got weird blinders when it comes to this friend. No excuse for his behavior, but it's not the norm. He would also handle the kids if I was the one having a visit. Fast forward three years, so has continued seeing Matt from time to time. I have never stopped so or given him grief when he visits with Matt. I just ask that he keep it away from me. Things came to a head about a week ago, so told me that Matt was coming over to apologize, at So's direction. The reason for this, was not that Matt had some great epiphany, but that So wants to start having Matt over again. Basically I'd be accepting a second fake apology so that the boys can play at my house again too. Barf. Here's where I wonder if I the idiot, so has asked for a compromise, that he'd only have Matt over when I'm not home. This is a concession I don't feel ready to make. After that night, he never once told Matt that his behavior was unacceptable. I don't think I should have to allow this person inside of my home, ever. I have taken a hard line on this. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. You need to have a sit-down conversation with your husband where you bring up each thing Matt said to you and get an answer from him as to why you deserved each comment. And then ask why he's okay with the comments you overheard and what he said to their friends. Don't let him pretend like he's not okay with what Matt has been saying because if he wasn't just fine with it he wouldn't still be hanging out with Matt. The guy doesn't respect you or your family one bit, he just wants a bachelor friend and needs to find one instead of trying to turn your husband back into one. Your so needs to grow some balls and respect for you. While he may never speak to you that way, allowing his friends to do so is awful and unacceptable. He didn't demand him stop making comments, or to apologize to you right then, he only wanted the apology after they wanted to meet at your house again. I'd suggest couples therapy to be honest because that's a big moral thing to not agree on. Not the idiot at all but you're letting your so get away with continuing to disrespect you by ignoring the way his gaping idiot of a friend talks about you. I hate to jump on that particular am I the idiot train, but why are you with someone who has so little respect for you? I would strongly suggest couples counseling, and telling your so immediately how badly he's behaving. You're the mother to his children and the person he's chosen to be with and he's treating you really badly. Obviously his friend is awful too, and you're well within your rights to ban him from your home. I, 35, am pregnant with my sister's, 30, child. My sister was has some fertility issues and is not able to have a safe pregnancy. I offered to carry the baby for her and her husband. I am now currently six and a half months along and everything is going well. Once we found out I was pregnant my sister made the decision to live like she herself is the one pregnant. I found it odd but I didn't see an issue with it. I understood that she is going through an emotional time. I mainly thought this was going to be something just between her and her husband. I was wrong and she has begun to act pregnant in her daily life. At first it was just small things like having her husband run out to get food she was craving but it developed into things like wearing maternity wear. She also gets annoyed if I talk about my cravings or pregnancy symptoms around her. These things don't bother me much and I just think my sister wants to feel involved. Today my sister wanted to go shopping to look at baby things since the stores have reopened in our area. The day started with her getting angry whenever sales staff would talk to me. I would explain to the salespeople that my sister is the mother whenever it was needed. After a few stores we arrived at a baby retailer where she wanted to make a baby registry. By this point I was extremely tired and wanted to go home. I had told my sister this and she promised this would be the last store. I must have looked exhausted because as we were waiting the salesperson brought over a chair for me to sit while the registry paperwork was done. When she brought it over she did say something like here's a chair for mom. I didn't correct the salesperson this time and just sat down. My sister told me to get up and give her the chair after I had sat down. I asked her why and tried explaining that I was tired. My sister berated me by saying the salesperson said the chair was for the mom and that she was supposed to sit. 
She said that this was her registry appointment and how dare I act like this was all about me. She said she was the one who was the expectant mother and that she needed to sit down now. I told my sister that yes she is going to be the mother but I am the one that is currently pregnant. I snapped at her that she is not actually pregnant and does not get how exhausting it can be. I told her I am trying my best to appease her but she is being ridiculous. My sister began to cry saying that I was shaming her for not being able to get pregnant and that I was making fun of her. I tried to defend myself and tell her that is not what I meant. She wouldn't listen and ran out of the store. Everyone in the store was staring at us. They were looking at me like I was a complete monster after hearing what my sister said. My mother says that I should have just let my sister have the seat. I know this whole thing must seem so small and stupid because it's about a chair. I don't know if I am the idiot in this situation or not. She wasn't even tired, she just wanted your mom chair. She really, really, really needs some therapy, because she is acting like a crazy person. I'd maybe approach her husband privately and say you're concerned. If he can't convince you it's under control, say you are second guessing their ability to parent and need to see both of them in some family counseling and parenting classes so you feel comfortable giving them this baby. Not the idiot. Your sister needs therapy quick before the baby comes and then probably for a while after. She is clearly struggling with her maternal identity in this situation. You are doing something amazing for her. I'm sure it is hard for her to see you pregnant and doing things she can't, but she needs to get a grip. Good Lord if she is treating you like this for doing one of the most selfless things you can do for another person, how is she going to react while you are in labor, I need an epidural screw her. I'm the mommy not her. Or she can't breastfeed? But seriously, there is no reason you, a pregnant woman, should have deferred the seat to her, a non-pregnant woman. She needs some therapy because she clearly has some issues she needs to work through. I would try to speak with your OB about some of these issues so you have a plan if she goes crazy during the delivery. My dad and I, 25, aren't close and I was never interested in having a relationship with him. He was the type of guy that was out all the time with his friends and never home. My mom divorced him when I was 12 and it got ugly. Sometime during the divorce we came home and stuff was missing. Not his stuff by the way because that was cleaned out when he left. One of the stuff missing was my mom's bracelet that she kept in a small box under some stuff in the closet. This bracelet was super special to her. Her parents were toxic AF but my mom was really close to her English teacher, mentor in high school who was like a mom to her. Her teacher gave her that bracelet at her HS graduation and my mom kept it all these years. My dad knew she treasured it and who else would look in that specific place to take only a bracelet when there was other stuff in the house? She knew it was him too but he always played dumb. The divorce was finalized and we didn't see my dad after that. My mom never got it back. Last June she got COVID and didn't make it. I was broken over that, still am I guess. Glad at least me, my sister and my stepdad have each other for support. Around October my sister told me dad wants to talk to me so she gave him my number. He apologized for being a crappy dad and asked if we could meet to talk at his place. I was ready to straight up say no but then I remembered he stole her bracelet and maybe this was a chance to get it back. I've asked my sister before to push him about it since they talk but she only asked him once and left it at that. I decided I could handle one visit just to see if he has it so I told him I'd hear him out. So yeah I met at his place. We caught up on stuff, he told me his sorry story about being immature and too focused on stuff that wasn't important than being a dad or whatever. I ended up bringing up the bracelet and how important that was to me since my mom's not here anymore. He still kept trying to act like it wasn't him until I said the only way I'd consider having a father-son relationship is if he just stopped with that and gave me my mom's bracelet. He finally gave in and thank God he actually kept it instead of throwing it out. He apologized for taking it and knew it was being super childish. I was just happy to have it back but mad my mom didn't get it before she died. I never guaranteed my dad a relationship. I just said I'd consider it. But I already made up my mind I don't want anything with him. It's been months since our meeting and my sister is pissed because my dad is disappointed I haven't talked to him. She says I was a huge piece of crap for making him think we'd reconcile. My only goal was getting the bracelet back and I wouldn't have talked to him in the first place if it wasn't for that so that's why I wonder if I'm the idiot. My sis is biased here since was little when they split and has a different version of him. Not the idiot in the slightest and my heart breaks for you, and for your mom who never got to have her treasured possession back before she died. Your father is a barefaced liar, 
vindictive, he certainly did this for no other reason than to hurt your mom, and on top of that a manipulative person turning your sister against you while you were both grieving. You had every right to get that bracelet back and you only had to be slightly dishonest because of his extremely blatant dishonesty. He's not owed a relationship with you. He did owe the bracelet back. And the fact that you had to cajole him tells me that you've made the right call here. Sorry to hear about your mom. As an aside, I hope things smooth over with your sister. Without knowing more details, it sounds like she's caught in the middle and dealing with a lot and that's just terrible. But you are absolutely in the right here. Your father is the A here and he pretty much admitted it. Like you said, you didn't promise him anything and after his behavior he certainly didn't deserve it. Where you go from here is up to you. It's unfortunate your mom passed before she could get her bracelet back, but now you have a precious memento.